Hey. It's actually episode 74. Okay. Last time I said it was 72, that was 73. So, hey. So there's no missing episode. No. there you, And so oh, don't, don't go looking for it. Don't look for the lost episode of Alex and Jim. Yeah. Because, <laughs> you know, la- what we did last week probably could be the lost episode. Yeah. It is not about Billy Joel lyrics. It is about a very pretty lady. Yep. Doing a really good song. Really lovely song. Uh, Kicking ass and taking names. <laughs> and buying flowers. And buying flowers and almost, almost showing you her breasts in the video. <laughs> She's really a master at almost. Yeah. That's what, <laughs> yeah, the editing on that. The Whoever had to edit that video has the best job in the world. <laughs> um, I thought it was great that, you know, just a million videos of ladies with great bodies singing songs. They never show them working out. <laughs> and I was like, oh, she's working out. That's why. Okay. She's, she's earning this. That explains why her body looks like that. Putting in the time. Yeah. yeah. Now, out of curiosity. So we talked about Miley Cyrus last week. Yep. Did you... Out of just because, listen to some more Miley Cyrus. I didn't. Okay, and not on purpose or anything. I just I listened to that song again. And I was like, yeah, I do like this song. All right, <laughs> and then I watch TV. <laughs> That's which great. is really my preferred way to spend time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alex and Jim aren't going to talk about TV anytime soon. Although I may. Dig back in the house and rewatch that show. That was our at the very beginning of the pandemic. That was the one where I was like, "All right, there's like eight or nine seasons." Yep, we're going in. I gotta let my dog in, or he's gonna. And yeah, a giant hypochondriac, and it didn't help. Yeah, it was still great. And you do know there's a show also. <laughs> speaking of not talking about television, there is a show called like Medical Mysteries. That is like a documentary series about sort of house style cases. But real ones. But real ones. Oh, I want to watch that. It's fascinating. Yeah. And all, you know, it's almost the same thing in that every time they figure it out and sort of help the person. Yeah. Um, But yeah, it's good stuff. I think it's from, it might be like under the 2020 umbrella or something like that. Okay. I, um, that sounds eminently watchable. That sounds great. Truly great. I yeah. I I was reminded of of an episode of House that I really like, and now having become familiar with the don't everybody be quiet. Ah, <laughs> uh, the uh, animal kingdom. See, I'm uh, I don't have a pet to, uh, and it's sad, but also good. Right. But there isn't. <laughs> Uh, we were trying to get that guest cat back in here because uh, oh, he was great. He's a sweetheart. Yeah, you could tell. The big orange tabby, right? No, that was my cat. That was your cat. The big black black cat. It was like a gray and white. Thank you. Uh, terrible at this game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Alex and Jim guest cats. <laughs> uh, there's. I was reminded there's this episode of House where... The, I now know a little more about the condition because I Googled stuff about it because I like the episode so much where this patient comes in who has that condition where she can't feel pain. Yeah. And Pica. then, the, huh? Pica. I Pica, is that what it's called? I think that's what it was called. And uh, and so the big reveal was that she had a, the condition she had, the telltale sign would have been the excruciating pain, right? Yes. And I was reminded why TV is TV and real life is real life. Because (laughs) nobody who has that condition is ever pretty. (laughs) Is that true? Yeah. Because one of the things that happens, so you had this pretty actress playing this part. 
one of the things that happens is you have scars near your eyes. Your lips are jacked up oh, from biting and chewing. And right. it's just a sad fact that you're not going to be a hot actress. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But they have to omit that part. Yep. <laughs> and that made me laugh and sad. Yeah. It is the tax you pay. Yep. Enjoy a little televised drama. Where you're like, here's another hot person with a condition. <laughs> yep. Somebody, uh, yeah. I, I, I watched for a while. Again, we're talking about TV. But um, there was a show called Quantico about, I think it's the FBI training center. Yeah. Um where it's like, okay, these here come the recruits who are all going to be FBI agents. <laughs> it's cartoonishly attractive, every single person. Right. It's like, stop it. I you I know you have to. Somebody in a meeting was like, you gotta have hot people and nobody will watch it. It's like it doesn't have to be only hot people. Yeah. Right? No. All the best shows and the most watched shows in history were like. Carol O'Connor, <laughs> yep. Alan Alda, okay. Yeah, um, did you ever, ever watch Strangers with Candy? What a brilliant show that was. I watched a little. It was crazy. I love that show so much. It's insane. And I started watching a show that I believe you recommended, and I'll, I'll know for sure if you've actually watched it. I've started watching Kunk on Earth. Yes, it's so stupid. It's the dumbest <laughs> thing. The dumbest thing. Um, we're having her on. Oh! Yeah. Very excited. To talk about that? To talk about that. And also, she was on that show, Afterlife, with Ricky oh. Gervais. Really good show. Uh, she's great, and that show is so stupid. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's like the subtlest Ali G is what it is yeah it's like polite alley g yeah and <laughs> and as a result better in my opinion because i'm like i could see how you'd be fooled by this nice lady yeah and they don't even come across as dumb they come across as uncomfortably polite <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's a, so that's good a, probably only make in england right because here you go what the fuck is wrong with you yeah thrown out all right, I want to mention your show. I want to talk about well, Seth's show. You, you yeah, weren't really the show. Um, you got a Billy Joel joke on. <laughs> Wait, which one did we do? You made a reference to um, scenes from an Italian restaurant just this week. That's right. I was like, ah, here we go. <laughs> yeah, man. Have you seen? Um, we have a writer named Ben Warheit who. Um, has played Billy Joel on our show. Oh my God. A couple of occasions, and it's pretty great. You might remember that some time ago, there was <laughs> this press release that somebody was going to make a Billy Joel biopic, but they did not have the rights to do his name, likeness, or music. <laughs> but they were going to try to do it anyway. <laughs> so Ben came on, uh, and long story short, sang a bunch of Billy Joel sound alike songs with different lyrics. <laughs> and was fucking stupid and great. Oh and my he's, god. He's done it twice. Yeah, enjoy that. Oh, I'm gonna look the hell up. That uh yeah. You know what? And I'll link to it at the end of the show. Good, Good times. <laughs> Man, that's great. His name's Ben. Ben Warheit. He's a little cuckoo bird. Um yeah, I don't. <laughs> I'm always fascinated when people half our age know about Billy Joel and or love him. Yeah. It's so weird. And, and especially if it's like, oh, did your parents play a lot of Billy Joel? And they're like, no. Huh. They just, just found him. Just found your way there. Because he's great. He's, he's great. great. So, and, uh, yeah. Any oldies station will have plenty of it. Yeah. So this is a little theory of mine about music. Um, it's not it's it's a decent theory, 
I don't even know if it's a theory. I think it may just be true. And I think I'm clever, but <laughs> um, the Beatles, you will be the Beatles continue to find a new audience. That's true. Billy Joel continues to find a new audience. Frank Sinatra to some degree. Yeah. Will find a new audience, but there's a bunch of artists who won't. Yeah. Billy holiday and Bing Crosby. Which probably I don't think would have anyway, but you're right. Uh, like Billy Holiday should. People should love Billy Holiday. Well, All the right. reality is there was this moment when the technology finally got good enough to give us a sample of what they did that's evergreen. Yeah. And that's all it is. It's just yeah. that. It's a tech thing. Interesting. Yeah. So like an old Led Zeppelin recording sounds like a, a new recording. <laughs> exactly. And it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Whereas cares. some wonderful artists you're not going to care about because they are they couldn't possibly give you a recording that won't just sound like garbage. Yeah. So you're not going to get over that gulf. There was a, some doc, I think it has a lot to do with the visual aspect too. Or like, if you don't see current day Led Zeppelin, you're like, great. Young, these are young people. I'm a young person. <laughs> I, hear, I hear youth in this. Yeah. Uh, there was a documentary about, uh, Oh, what's the canyon? Laurel Canyon, right? Where yeah. all the 60s and 70s artists lived in sort of a big commune. They did this documentary and they did a very smart thing, which is normally they'll show footage from Laurel Canyon and like a barbecue with Jim Morrison or whoever. And then they'll cut to the current day rock star being an old man in a chair telling you what it was. And they very smartly just did voice. And they didn't show you what they look like now. And it really made you sort of feel like you were in Laurel Canyon with all these young people. Oh, <laughs> clever. They didn't show you like, here's David Crosby today, which would not work out today. <laughs> right. But when the documentary came out um, and just watching it, I was like, you know why this rules? They're not showing us because I don't want to see what time does to people. No, you don't get enough of that shit from my bathroom mirror. Oh yeah, I told I said one time I mentioned this one time before, but I'll say it again because it's funny to me. Was I was on tour doing a little uh, casino run, and I was playing a casino that also Kenny Rogers was playing. Yeah. Oh yeah. And there's a poster for him that honestly just looked like a poster for a dentist for old people. <laughs> <laughs> it just looked like a dentures ad advertisement. Yes. He had a smile that looked like those aren't quite your teeth, are they, Kenny? And uh, and to his great credit, he might when they were said we need a poster, he would probably said, Well, I'll take my picture now then. What he probably <laughs> did. Yeah. They but yeah, to be a setup. Yeah. My one of my favorite things is seeing some old band. And then some like 20 year old running out and singing. And you're like, okay, I don't think they were in the band before. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're the new drummer, right? <laughs> yeah. You're the one who can still drum. Yeah. Um, the other thing I want to mention about your monologues, I'm enjoying them more now that life doesn't seem quite so uh, yeah. hopeless. I'm loving I'm I'm all in on the dark Brandon meme. Yeah, man. And that and that's dude, it is so funny because it is exactly what there's no exaggeration. People have underestimated Joe Biden his whole career, yep. and he is making hay out of it right now. It's great. Yeah. He is he just it very wisely, and I you know, I don't know if it's wisdom, but he doesn't sound sharp. And I think people get comfortable and then uh, he shows up. And then he nails them. It's so funny. Yeah. And and he's really smart. I'll tell you, politics, man. Politics is gross, but you got to do it. Yep. He's like, well, we can't get a lot done right now because you can't because the house right. is a fucking 
you know, joke. Um, But here's what you can do. You can go on tour and remind people what you got done. Yep. Brilliant. Do that, And you can go, hey, uh, fucking concert fees are too high. Can we agree on that? Yeah. Uh, Credit card late fees should be lower. Yeah. Republican agrees with that. Does your rep? Yep. And are they clapping? Oh, they're not because they were instructed not to clap for anything. (laughs) I did say on the show that you could tell Kevin McCarthy felt like Trump's eyes on him. (laughs) Every time he clapped, his phone call was getting longer and longer. Right. I love that joke. (laughs) And then the loud ring. How's that? How's he? How's he making my ring louder? That was a good joke. That was you. That was good. That was very nice. Um, that was, yeah, nicely. Yeah, fucking true. Because, and then the Kevin McCarthy, God, what a weaselly nothing of a human being. Yeah. Afterwards, you go, that was the most partisan. Shut up. Nothing you say means anything. <laughs> yeah. And his, I love his approval rating is 19%. And I'm like, yeah, that's t- too high, but I'll take yeah. it. You kind of want to round up that 19% in a room and go, what is wrong with you? What do you love? Not Um, all opinions are valid. Yeah. Yeah, man. You get to vote, but don't be don't When they try to poll you, just say, like, I'm not ready. Yeah. I don't have what it takes to be polled. You know, when they're talking to them, I'm a big fan of wishies and washies. I don't know what that is. (laughs) Oh, wow. That explains it. Oh, angry, angry Jim. <laughs> ah, yeah. Woo. So you picked the Great Suburban Showdown. And I would tell you something really weird. I have strong opinions about this song. Yeah, I do. I really do. I have. So first of all, let's talk about the music for a minute. <laughs> Doesn't yeah. it sound like a a, a nine bit or eighteen bit video game? <laughs> it does. It is, a, I guess, a synthesizer of some kind. It had to have been with that. You think it was inspired by, like, the Donkey Kong interstitial music? <laughs> it had to have been when that equipment was just barely available and people thought it was neat. Yeah, I think so. I think the whole industry went through a phase like the same they did when Auto-Tune came out. Yeah. It was widely abused. And now it sort of has settled into a place where it's used properly and with some uh uh dexterity yeah um, but yeah i think everybody got their first synthesizer and lost their minds yeah that's what it sounds like they were just like this instead of piano and they're like no 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 this is <laughs> just it's a spice it's not an entree yeah and it honestly sounds like the kind of synthesizer i could have bought at target for eighteen dollars, yeah. the time. <laughs> yep. It, Did you have the little Casio keyboard that was also a calculator? <laughs> I well, I don't know if it was a calculator, but I did have the Casio keyboard that, like, you could click a button and and it would just play a song, and you could pretend to play. It did that thing. Oh, I had the one with like eight buttons, and they each had a different beat. Oh, I had that. Casa Nova. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right <laughs> yeah and then you would go dink doink dink doink and then you go oh, fuck i'll just add some stuff up yeah i'll do my taxes then you were like this would be good to forget i own until i move yeah or, or maybe i'll make an album <laughs> <laughs> but that's what he did and um and and i wish he hadn't <laughs> Yeah, because there is real piano in the song, and it's very pretty. Yeah, I think it's a I think it's a better song than that gives it. Yes, because I do like the song, and but that damn thing, and it just feels so artificial. You know, there's no roundness to the notes. Yeah, and it's a weird. I don't know if it tracks with the theme of the song. Like going yeah. home and going back to your roots. <laughs> yeah. It's and it's very countrified, this song. Yeah. Yeah. Hardcore, like not 
in a way like I'm going to make a country song more like he just did. Yeah. Like yeah. It, there's an authenticity to, I noticed it is in his vocals, no tricks. Now he had the youngest version of his voice that we, we will hear, right? Pretty young, oh, but pretty, high. but ripe. Like he's had some experience. Yeah. A little. So I like, I like the vocals. There's just, he's just singing. There's no nonsense. Yeah. No nonsense. No curly cues. No solos really, except for the stupid keyboard. Yeah. (laughs) Um, The, um, the bridge uh, of this song is a very natural bridge. So it's pretty well written. The bridge doesn't go somewhere crazy. Yep. It just kind of fits. It's a very well written musically. And then you're using this $8 machine to record it. <laughs> it's silly. Yeah. It makes it all come off a little slight. Yeah. Um, and it's a better song than that stupid machine gives it credit for. The singing's better. And the lyrics, which you'll start us off with in a second, are. Uh-huh better than that eight dollar machine yep for sure it almost could be a acoustic guitar it would be great with acoustic guitar mm-hmm. or a slide slide or what is it called steel guitar some steel guitar oh there. yes oh. like if you lean you might as well lean hard into the country because it fits yeah yeah it's, it's a song about family and the problems with family yeah Lyrics we'll get into, but the lyrics are not, they're not, he's not yelling at you, which is nice. That is nice. He is a little smug and superior. He definitely is that. But he's, this is what, Street Life Serenade is 74, so yeah. he's not 30 yet. Yeah. Um, so you can forgive some youthful overconfidence, I guess. Yeah. Um. But damn, it's a good little song. It's a good little song. And All right. It's always a great melody. Yeah. And uh, lots of sky commas. <laughs> yep. Let's give it up. I'll get in. Go, no, sir. Flying east on a plane. Drinking all that free champagne. I guess I saw this coming down the line. Um, I love, first of all, immediately, you know, oh, he's flying from L.A. back to New York. Yeah. See the fam flying east in first class. And they and the studio paid for it, probably, because it's free champagne, because you don't think of it as free if you had to buy the ticket. Right. And you don't you're not impressed. It's not a thing to notice. Yeah. Oh, fucking free champagne. Ah, son of a bitch. I guess I saw this coming down the line. I guess I, I had to go home at some point. Yeah, I, th- I feel like that feels like it. I guess this was bound to be something I had to do. Yeah. yeah already not happy with having to go home. Yeah. Or, uh, or I'll finish off this chunk. Good shape. Good lyric shape. Lovely lyric shape. Yeah. <laughs> and I know it should be fun. But I think I should have packed my gun. <laughs> Got that old suburban showdown in my mind. Now, right away, I don't think for a minute you think it's a real gun. Because I think it's pretty clear Yeah, that's sardonic, it's sarcastic. But it's a, like, the gun right away to me is just like, yeah, I'm going to have to deal with these idiots. Yep. And then immediately backed up by the uh, metaphorical showdown. Yeah. So not expecting any actual showdown. Yeah. With guns or anything else. Um, but I think it's very funny to. He's got an ongoing relationship with the suburbs. Yeah. And uh, this is not the trivia question, but do you know that he is from Levittown, Long Island? Uh, which was the first planned suburb. I did. I did know that mainly because it was a trivia question before. <laughs> ah, well, I'm glad it wasn't today. But, <laughs> um, and it was created for World War II vets. Yeah. 
and or survivors, I suppose. And it was, unfortunately, he found out later, segregated. Yes. And that, when he found that out, to his great credit, influenced his disappointment. Yeah. which uh, That is very good about him. Yeah, and his ongoing uh, snarkiness. Yeah. Um, but yeah, going back home for the, the old suburban showdown. I do I love the occasion for yeah. going home. I do love pulling out such a big, bold metaphor of packed my gun, because that really does tell you how he feels about it. That's pretty good. Yeah. Um, and you wonder, like, is it for them or for yourself? <laughs> yeah, is it for the temple or the point? Yeah, I got gotcha. <laughs> some ideation in your history, Bill. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, either way, it's beautiful. <laughs> Really great and it's a great he also lets you know like i know what i'm doing it's the great suburban showdown is such yeah. a sort of corny but also elevated phrasing i'm like okay we know yeah it's me metaphors and junk yep um is it me or does this still be you i don't know um how is yours divided that was the first break okay mine isn't broken there but that's fine because we can break it there that's fine because the I'm on BillyJoel.com. It almost feels like he typed it out. <laughs> <laughs> Sit around with the folks, tell the same old jokes. I like that because I have old relatives. Yeah. And I have heard jokes told so many times. Oh, man. And they're funny if they're the real jokes. Like, hey, remember that time when Uncle Tom did this thing? That's funny because that's reminiscing. But sometimes it's like, have you heard the one about? And you're like, yeah, I have heard the one about. Yeah. You, you always start with that one. Yeah. Bored to death on Sunday afternoon. Mom and dad, me and you in the outdoor barbecue. That's pretty <laughs> great. <laughs> think I'm going to hide out in my room. This is great. There's a lot of information here that I like. Yeah. Uh, I don't know who you is. Mom and dad, me and you. Oh, yeah. It feels like a sibling. Yeah. You know, his sibling arrangement does he have? Is he trying? I think he has a brother, right? Yeah. Are we the you? That's what I was going to ask. Are we the you? Is he including us? Is this an attempt to bring us into the world? Whether he feels that way or not, it, I felt that. Yeah. Like, yeah can I, I mean, he's painting a very distinct picture that we all are familiar with. So I'm like, yeah, we've all been here. Yeah. I, so I think we're the you. I think we're meant to feel like we're stuck at this dumb barbecue as well. Now, do you feel, I feel like... Outdoor barbecue is on par with tonic and gin. Because where else is the barbecue? You and the <laughs> outdoor barbecue. He's referring to a grill, I would think. Yeah. Which is definitely always outdoors. <laughs> you know, it didn't hit me that way only because I remember at my own home having cookouts that were sometimes we cooked food on the stove indoors and ate outside. Yes. But I think you're right. I think this is a little tonic and gin. Yeah. But yeah. I'll make it fit. I need some syllables. Yeah. And I like that uh, he has a room there. So then it's the house he grew up in uh, or at, at some point lived in as a kid. Yeah. So it's very funny and relatable. It's, you know, it's our going home for Christmas. We're like, oh, I have my own life. And I've like, the record company fly, flies me first class, but now I got to fucking sleep in my room. Yeah, which, which probably still has, you know, Yankees poster up or whatever. His Beatles posters and uh, yeah, <laughs> picture of a fishing boat. <laughs> <laughs> I had in this fucking room. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. That is pretty good. So yeah, it's I like it feels comfortable, this song. Yeah. 
uh, in it's in his discomfort. I'm like, oh yeah, I get it. I relate to it. It feels true. It doesn't feel trite, really. It feels very real. Yeah, and that's nice. Again, that stupid m- machine, Ugh, just a piano, or like your honestly, a, an acoustic guitar would be so good. Um, more of the same. Oh, this is kind of a, the bridge, right? Yeah. Chorus? I'm not sure. I've been gone for a while, made some changes in my style, and they say you can't go home anymore. Well, the streets all look the same, and I'll have to play the game. We'll all sit around in the kitchen chairs with the TV on and the neighbors there. Those last two lines are fantastic. They really are. In the kitchen chairs, which is the fucking worst when you go to old people's houses and they won't let you sit in the good chairs or on the yeah. couch. They're like, scrape, 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 sit in this. <laughs> Fuck, it's wooden and it's rickety. And the neighbors are there and you don't know them. Yeah. And you if you do know them, them, you didn't like them. Didn't like them. And you're like, Fuck, and the TV is on. Yeah. Old people always got to have the TV on no matter what's going on. And if the and if those damn neighbors have any memories about you, it's one or two that you don't want to hear about. Yeah. Hey, remember when you shut up? That's what I remember. You're the kid who shit your pants on the school bus. <laughs> now you're in Hollywood now. Do they know about the school bus? <laughs> <laughs> I li- I also like just the fucking cornball eternal feeling of i've been gone and i've made some changes in my style yeah yeah uh, you fucking dick that means you came home with a shitty mustache yeah and like a fringy sleeve jacket yeah which and you paid way too much for i like that everybody sucks in this song yeah well he's a little shithead who thinks he's a, a rock star and doesn't need this shit anymore his parents fucking suck the neighbors are there. They suck. Oh, it's great. Yeah, and I like with the TV on with the neighbors there, which is not only are the neighbors there, but you are being more or less cajoled into hanging out with them for a while. Yeah. Ooh. Between 30 minutes and an hour, depending on the program. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and just answering the stupidest questions. Yeah. Oh, do you uh, see anybody famous? Right. <laughs> out in the yard where my daddy worked so hard he never lets the crabgrass grow too high i don't know what crabgrass is do you i do we used to have to deal with it it's just a weed okay it's very um you know when you have your pretty green lawn and then you have this darker green crabgrass that sort of grows like a vine through it mm. Fuck, and you have to always get rid of it. It's because pretty, otherwise it'll take over, right? Take over. It's Yeah, it'll choke out the regular grass. Oh, okay. And we don't like it, I guess. I don't yeah, know. We don't like it. We're always trying to get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the place hasn't changed, and that's why I'm going to feel so strange. Now that makes sense. That tracks. I feel strange because I have changed. Right. I've got a wispy mustache now. <laughs> <laughs> but I have to face the music by and by. I don't know that I like that. That's fine. Yeah. I don't know what that means. It's just an expression that he plugged in there, the by and by. Yeah. And I don't know that it really makes sense. It doesn't help. And for a second, I thought it makes so little sense that when I first looked at it, I thought it said but I have to face the music. Bye bye. <laughs> and, and I was like, well, that would make more sense. <laughs> yeah. But I'm, there's the a couple of these real corny phrases. Yeah. That one it was old timey at this time too. Cause the by and by is probably a expression from the 1800s. 1800s. Yeah. Dang. Yeah. Also, what music are you facing, bud? Yeah. <laughs> Although 
referring to this whole thing as a showdown is very funny too because it's more of like a standoff right no one's really going at anybody yeah you're hiding out in your room the tv's on <laughs> just like marking time yeah i don't yeah i do not love that lyric i don't it's fine it feels like a placeholder it feels like get rid of the stupid synthesizer and fix this line that's what it feels like yeah uh but i've been gone for a while oh it's, it's back made some changes in my style and they say you can't go home anymore that's another old-timey corny phrase yep although i do like they say you can't go home anymore well the streets all look the same <laughs> So he's like, maybe you can go home because it never fucking changes. Oh, yeah, that's pretty good. That's a pretty good. Yeah. Uh, not what when they say you can't go home anymore, it's, it's because you changed. Yeah. I think it's very funny to go. Yes, I can. It's the same. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, uh, streets all look the same and I'll have to play the game. We'll all sit around in the kitchen chairs with the TV on and the neighbors there. I really can't overstate how much I love those two lines. That is pretty good. Oh, damn. Now the next one, my lord, if we, if yeah, if you like cliches, <laughs> please pull we'll up a kitchen chair. <laughs> we'll drive into town when this big bird touches down, sir. Wow. This the big the bird you know the big bird he's talking about a plane oh the, the iron bird <laughs> i like this next line i'm only coming home to say goodbye great not true but great you'll be back yeah you will <laughs> then i'm gone with the wind ah! <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's so terrible and beautiful and wonderful yeah and I, and I won't be seen again till that great suburban showdown in the sky. I won't be seen again till I'm dead. Yeah. And Not also, family. and also, I'm assuming since it's a showdown in the sky, but you're going to hell for sure. That's, you know, if showdowns in heaven. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, that's when all the showdowns are over. Yeah, you've, you've, uh, yeah. This is a dude who, uh, grew up on Long Island, then moved to LA and is like, what does, what do they say in country songs? <laughs> Probably a bunch of corny old timey phrases. Yeah. Be, he's not wrong. You know what I can really relate to, though? I'll tell you what, I can remember. When I moved away from Tucson, because Tucson was where I was a young boy, yep. I moved to Chicago and then in L.A. and whatever, and I I hated the idea of ever moving back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, for sure. Hated that idea. But Step now, back. Huh? Step backwards, yeah. Yeah. The failure. Now I know that I'm not required to. Right. And I never was. And then also now I'm also aware that a city is just where you're at. So it's fine. Um, yeah. You know, we live currently where we live. We're near San Francisco, beautiful city. Lovely. Um, and we probably will end up moving back to L.A. at some point because I fucking love L.A. <laughs> yeah, I love that city. Got but it it's also, Huh? You got it dialed in. Dude, I love L.A. L.A. is such a good city. This is all the things I like. There's a there's a thing people will say that oh people in LA are phonies and I'm just what I say is I'm like yeah isn't it the best? <laughs> the best because not better. It is just nice. It's just yeah because how sincere do you want everybody to be with you? Don't you just want like three or four people to be sincere with you, and everybody else please just be superficial with me. That's so great. Just be a fun background. And I'll be that for you. By the way, people are phonies in Des Moines, in New York, <laughs> everywhere. We're Dude, I, full of shit. I have a bit of my... More entertaining about it in LA. I have a bit in my act, I'm like, where I say, I am sure there are phony farmers. For sure. 
who say, oh, nice crop to your bat in front of you and to your back go, that fucking asshole's growing soybeans? Good luck. Yeah. No and then, and then on your soil. the tag is, the only difference is nobody on their deathbed ever says, man, I wish I would have grown corn. <laughs> but I didn't have the nerve. <laughs> oh, why didn't I chase my dream? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I love, I love LA. I love LA to me is like it's a lot of what's great about New York, but not as fast. Yeah. And for sure. you got great food. There's great bars. There's you know, what else do you need? You need great bars and great food. That's all you need. Really it. And then a house. Yep. A house. Well, you can't have that. But oh well. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta live at the bar. <laughs> and is that so bad? Is that so bad? Well, I don't know. I did it for my twenties and thirties. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the song has a proper ending. I'll give it that, but it's in that damn synthesizer. Yeah. yeah. The thing that bothers me about the synthesizer too is whenever I hear something in the song that I think, I think I could have played that for them. Yeah, it is like, um, you can see the sheet music. I'm like, oh, I could probably do this. Yeah, I think like this, you'd be doing it. <laughs> give me, some, yeah. That's what would come out if you did that. Yeah, and you've got Billy Joel's there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's very good at uh, keyboards and stuff. Famously so, a man of the keys. <laughs> the keyboard guy himself. The keyboard gent himself. <laughs> so I just don't know why we did that. I don't know. Yeah, it was he was enamored with the tinkering. Yeah. It's like, oh, I'm just going to use it for a whole song. The other thing it could have been, and I, I don't know, because this is very early, right? Yeah. 74? Yes. Well, how many albums has he done at this point? Is this his second album? Is this his first? Or Third. Yeah. So it's Cold Spring Harbor, Piano Man, then Street Life Serenade. That's right. So maybe it's it's quite possible he's at a point where the amount of money available to him is limited to yeah. record this album. Probably. So you think of little shortcuts. Um, a Street Life Serenade, like how many hits are off this album? None. Probably none. I can't remember what else is on there. Yeah. I feel like it was a real in-between album. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad you picked it. It's still, I don't, dislike the song per se what? yeah it's enjoyable yeah it's also it's very telling about him and where he's at as an artist like trying to figure some things out you know there was a lot of country flavoring on piano man right and then like he's like, oh, maybe some of that. But then also on the same album is Los Angelinos, which is a weird song. Yes. With a Spanish accent. I wrote something. Down. I guess the entertainer was the hit off of this one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then there's an instrumental piece. Two instrumental pieces. Yeah, that's right. Finish an album real fast. <laughs> uh we'll do two instrumental pieces yeah i the song i picked before we get to it is i picked another one from street life serenade oh, great. fascinated with this now fascinated with this album because it's a weird album it's so weird and um, I'd love to know the story of how it got made and how quickly <laughs> yeah and the <laughs> fact that i immediately was like this sounds like mr do or or Dig Dug, the song. <laughs> yeah. It was like, right away, it just sounded like something so cheap. Great. And so we, and it tell, well, it says a lot about how important the fucking production is because you have the fucking, one of the greatest piano players ever. And that's yeah. what you got out of it. I wonder if he would have like a year of everyone going, oh, Piano Man, Piano Man was so great. You're the Piano Man. And he's like, no. <laughs> play this other shitty keyboard right 
got a lot of different skills. We're like, oh, maybe the piano. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but you know what, kid? Yeah, it's worth a listen once you get past that stupidity. The vocals are great. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a shame almost. Maybe yeah, wasted some of his best voice years. Dude, the vocals are so clean. It's and like I said, no tricks. He's not trying to sound country. He's not doing any of that nonsense. Oh, just sincerely complaining about going back to the suburbs. Yeah, this I I believe he meant this for sure. He definitely the you know subtitle could be "fuck those people" because <laughs> yeah, we know how he feels about his parents. Yeah, um, especially his mother. Yeah. I'm sure the neighbors are no better. No, he didn't. They made him sit on a folding chair and watch TV with those idiots. <laughs> it was probably a folding chair. It was a little stupid. Yep. Know. One of those shitty prefab tables. Yep. Oh. And now you're, they don't, they forget you're not a kid anymore. You're old enough to have back problems. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's sitting in a piano all those years. <laughs> Probably had the worst spine in the group. Well, listen, real quick, I'm just going to tell you, this is as easy as it looks. Oh, boy. It doesn't look easy. Yeah, but you know what it is. <laughs> See, you're like that guy at the Trivial Pursuit game who grabs a card and goes, oh, this was so easy, and then reads the question, and it's so hard. <laughs> It's coffee. Yep. Okay. Coffee. And it's me saying it's easy. As a coffee jerk. And the, there's somebody's a jerk for sure. Yeah. They don't, they don't think they're a jerk though. <laughs> oh fuck. Coffee. Where's coffee? They they think they're so important. Oh, those. <laughs> they think they're so important. Baristas? Well, man, whoever whoever's coffee this is is probably making coffee a big... drinking businessmen. They're probably upset about the mess. Oh, yeah. They're very German. They're German businessmen. <laughs> <laughs> they're probably, you know, overreacting to this coffee, you know, in a way that, you know, you'd want to comfort them. Yeah, they're upset. They're crying over spilled coffee. Yeah, they're crying over their coffee. Okay. Oh, yeah. Crying over their coffee cup. Crying in their coffee cup. Oh, fuck. I can't grab it. And they shouldn't do that. They shouldn't cry over their coffee. Well, they can. Okay. <laughs> but don't complain to me. <laughs> uh, uh, shit. Wow. Also, it's yeah. been a hint 12 or 13 times before. <laughs> You're making it worse. We've done it. we've done this one over and over again. Uh, are you a big shot? Yeah. <laughs> Go and cry over your, on your coffee, uh, but don't come uh, bitching to me. Damn it. <laughs> I'm I'm bra I'm blaming uh brain fog. And I don't know that it was a great clue because it's really just, it's not exactly like coffee anyone's enjoying. No, but it's clearly coffee. <laughs> yeah. That famous, very famous lyric, especially in our circle. Right. It's, <laughs> if you're a Billy Joel fan, it's incredibly famous. If you're yeah. you and me, it's even more so. If it's yeah. this show. Oh. Big shot. <laughs> It's a, this is the Venn diagram. Yeah, it's dead center. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a dummy. Uh, well, uh, I picked a pretty hard trivia question, I think. Is it Big Shot? Yes. Damn it, I got it. All right, I knew it. <laughs> Which song mentions copy? Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, Billy Joel wrote a song for his wife, Katie Lee, called All My Life. Remember that song? You know that song? It was released not uh, via record. Where was it released? 
I do know the answer to this. It was released by Hot Air Balloon. <laughs> Shot down over South Carolina. Oh, that's right. That's right. Just this week, they finally got it. Released? It wasn't released via album. Nope. Was it only like cassette tape or something? It was a new age of music releases. Oh. So only digitally. Digitally on, Billy you'll never know, so I'll tell you, People Magazine's website. Bizarre. It, it was a sort of a test run. Like, can we put a song on a website, get a bunch of traffic for our website, and pay the artist with that? And uh, the answer was no. <laughs> <laughs> and then oh. he's heard the song. Wow. Probably now exists somewhere else. I don't know. I didn't look for it. That is weird. But it was like a little marketing experiment. Um, which is not surprising because he was like the first DVD or C D. Yeah. That's, that's wild. So that was my wife used to work for this company company called Entertainer. An uh -huh. entertainer, their idea was that they would deliver you TV shows and, you know, videos and whatever and movies in your home streamed via your computer. Okay. That Not was bad. their idea. And they hardcore went out of business. And <laughs> you had a hard, fine time working for them once you worked for them. And they had, they were one of those early companies that had capital, but no product, but they had a vision, right? And the next company to do that, to try that same model, was called Netflix. <laughs> so the nothing wrong with the model. Nope. And they were too early. They were, um, and I there's an axiom about not wanting to be first to market. Yes. And they are they are a grand example of that because I doubt you've heard of the company. Right. Um, so your company is first to market. They make all the mistakes. Another company is watching that. Yeah. Like, okay. We'll do everything except those five things and we'll be successful. Yep. And yeah. Netflix's brilliant thing uh, that they did too that is lost to the annals of time is when they did that thing where they would mail you discs. Yeah. That was never the business they were trying to create. I didn't know that at the time. That oh, wasn't didn't... the business. That was the business they would have to sustain while they built what they have now. Smart. That was the money generator to do the other thing. Wow. Did you know that? I did know that. Isn't that wild? That's uh, foresight. Yeah. That's a thing that's gone by the wayside. That It's insane to me because the other business model was a perfectly good business model. Well, hey, you don't have to go to Blockbuster anymore. We'll yeah. mail them to you. And you can keep them as long as you want. And everything about it was customer friendly. You know, it was like, there won't be no fees. You pay us a membership. You do as, you know, we'll Gary Goldman has. Our, yeah. Huh? Get you on our side. You'll associate yeah. our name with ease and comfort. Yep. Gary Goldman, Gary Goldman has the great joke where he says, they have this great deal. I feel like if I'm not watching a movie, I'm 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 losing money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, which I'm sure is part of the model. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, isn't that funny? That wasn't their business model. Now let me tell you the song we're gonna do now next week before I forget it. From the album "Street Life Serenade," Serenade Weekend Song. Oh hell yeah! We do love weekend songs. Do you like that song? I love that song. Okay, good. Yeah, great. It's a it's a barn burner. It's got a lot of lyrics. And a lot, <laughs> a lot of lyrics. I don't remember the shape, but I'm betting pretty good. Fat, it's nice and fat. It's a uh, zoptic, I'll say. Zoptic. <laughs> the first, uh, first use of zoptic on our show, I think. We did it, guys. Right here in episode seventy. Four? 70. 
Flowers was 73. We're yep. in episode 74, 75. 75 will be Weekend Song. The Zoftic Zoft edition. Yep, Weekend Song. I, uh, yeah, right? Yeah, man. I, uh, I don't know. I like that, but there's so many needs to clean that up. It's really unsettling. Yeah. How do you do that? That's somebody's. That's probably an office, right? Um, there's scissors, so that doesn't help. <laughs> Maybe it's just somebody put too much coffee in the thing in the filter. Yep, percolated up and spilled over. Yep, it happens. And somebody didn't bother to fix it. That also happens. Yeah, because I do that. You're like, I guess this is how it is now. Yeah, this is just work your way through it. Wait till it all crusts up and hardens. Have you ever had a chihuahua? No, thanks. Um, if you throw a blanket on the chihuahua, the chihuahua doesn't immediately go, oh, no. The chihuahua <laughs> seems to go, well, I guess this is how things are now. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm in my blanket era. They just seem to make peace with it. <laughs> That's nice. Pretty quickly, too, to where eventually you're the one who goes, now, come on, you, you don't have to be in a movie like it. <laughs> you don't have to live like this, man, even though I just did this to you. I guess the blanket era is over. Okay. Okay. Who says you can't go home again? That's right. Chihuahuas, that's who say that. I don't know if that's something. Anyway, but I'll just end it this way by saying you're, you're doing fantastic work on your show. I'm enjoying the monologues. Oh, way good. better than I did when it felt like our country was ending. Yeah, it's more fun to do them this way. Yeah. 